Welcome to the show, Lemonade with the Seth Brothers. When life throws you lemons, what do you do? You make lemonade. This is your host Kunal with my guest tonight, Dr. Shristi Mehta. Dr. Mehta, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing wonderful, Kunal. How are you? Thank you for having me on the show. I'm doing super fantastic and I'm super excited to have you on the show tonight. What we're going to unpack on the show tonight is Dr. Mehta's struggles and success, what she's gone through for the last two decades, being a first generational American who came to America about 20 years back to go to college. But what makes her story unique is her having the first generation mindset, even though she's second generation orthodontist. And as we talk about today, it's her mindset of staying in tune of what she wants to accomplish by herself. And to be successful, that's the key. So first generation mindset and tapping into that is a key to being successful. Because when you do that, guess what happens? You are relentless. You have the fortitude and you never allow anything or anyone to stand between you and your financial goals. If you want to be successful, you tap into your first generation mindset. So Dr. Mehta, walk us through your journey. You came to America about 20 years back to go to college, but you came from a family where your dad is a leading orthodontist in India. And people from all over the country come and see him in Delhi, including ex-prime ministers of India, ex-leaders of India. And you came to America to get your degree to be an orthodontist, and you had the choice. The road was paved to go back and join your dad's practice. But you did not do that. You applied your first generation mindset, of staying in America, starting your practice, being in the business, and that is incredible. So walk us through your journey, Dr. Mehta. So first of all, thank you for having me on the show. It's absolutely fantastic to be here. The energy is amazing, and uh, you know, we absol I absolutely love it. So to tell you a little bit about my journey, you know, I grew up, I was born and raised in Delhi in India, which is the capital of the country. I had the first 17 years of my life there, went to dental school in Manipal, which is a college in the southern part of India for the first time. And then, of course, I repeated dental school coming here. So that was another part of the journey. Um, arrived here in 2002 to go to orthodontic residency which is a specialty of dentistry. And, um, you know, we've been here since then. I met my husband while we were in school. And uh, we have built this life here together. And, uh, you know, we built a couple of businesses, the first one being my practice in Oklahoma while we were there. And then, you know, moved out here and we're loving it. And this community has been amazing. And, you know, we have absolutely loved living in Houston. So I'm going to start with this, Dr. Mehta. When I first met you and he said you were an orthodontist, mujhe farak bhi pata tha ki what is a dentist, what's a dental hygienist, and what's an orthodontist. So first, give us one-on-one. What yes. does it mean to be an orthodontist? And how is that a specialization that sets you apart as a specialist in the market today? So... That is an amazing question because that is one of the biggest misconceptions in our specialty is as to what is an orthodontist, why are you guys different, what do you do that's special, and why are you different from a dentist. So the main thing that I want to say about that is an orthodontist is a dentist that has done three additional years of school and have all this extra training and expertise in learning how to design your custom smile for you. So whether it's braces for little children or it's Invisalign for adults or braces for adults, um, there's nobody better than an orthodontist to give you your dream smile. So what you're saying is, if I have a heart problem, who do I want to go to? You, a heart surgeon, not just a surgeon. That's exactly right. So what you're saying is, you want to make your smile beautiful, you got to find an orthodontist. They, they specialize in making your smiles beautiful. Yes. So what yes. you're saying is, while you went to dental school, had all the qualifications, start your own clinic, but you went to school for three more years that's right. to become a specialist, and that's what makes you special. That's part of it, <laughs> yes, I would say, but that's definitely the educational, the education and getting the skill set, that was definitely one part of it. And then, you know, what we do is equating it to the medical world. Would you ever go get plastic surgery at your general doctor that treats diabetes? You wouldn't do that, right? So why would you trust your smile? 
to somebody that's not specifically trained in that specialty and I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it for my kids. I wouldn't do it for my parents. So Now, in your journey for over the last two decades being in America, you are doing really well based in Oklahoma City, but your, da- your, your husband is a physician. He actually works for MD Anderson Houston. He's, he's an onco- oncologist. You had a great practice. You were doing really well in Oklahoma City, but you unrooted yourself, moved with your husband and two young daughters to Houston 20. 20- 17. Walk us through the journey of having something working for you, but having a belief system and following your husband and making him follow his dream to working for a top cancer hospital in the world. Yes. Moving to Houston. And now that moved, that move to Houston also meant you had to start from ground zero. Yes. No patients, no history of all the patient care that you done in Oklahoma. It's out of ground zero. And now you are building your legacy for your daughters and your family members. So walk us through the decision-making process of leaving established practice and all the patient care you had in Oklahoma to uproot yourself and move to Texas. These are all amazing questions. So let me just start by saying that when, so in 2007, my husband and I moved to Oklahoma. I had an amazing job opportunity uh, with practice ownership. And uh, I had the ability to grow my business as much as I could. I spent a lot of time and energy just getting better at my craft, which is giving people the best smiles that they can potentially have. And at that time, you were working for a clinic, but you had the opportunity of buying over a practice in Oklahoma City. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, my husband had a wonderful job opportunity at the University of Oklahoma in the Cancer Center. And we actually did that for a good part of nine years. And he was tremendously successful in his field. I was tremendously successful in mine. We had two little girls in the meanwhile. And life was as good as it could be, both from the perspective of just quality of life. We were financially doing well. We were happy. And then Are you you're not happy. No, well, no, no, we're we're, we're, happier at, we're we're happier. Texas makes people happy. Absolutely, everything <laughs> is bigger and better in Texas. No question about it. But. So my husband, you know, in 2016, he starts to feel a glass ceiling of what he can accomplish um, in his work situation with what he does. It's pretty specialized and it's kind of unique and no better place to do it than MD Anderson. So he got this opportunity and we had to make a difficult choice for me to uproot our life from a very comfortable work situation, very comfortable life, you know, friends, home away from home sort of life that we had built for ourselves there. And we we just made the choice that, you know what, this is the next step for us. And, you know, uprooting ourselves from one place to another. Hey, when you can do it from one country and come here, why can't you move cities, you know? So we just decided to come out here and we just said, this is it. This is our new home. We're going to make this the best version of our life that we can. And, you know, here we are. Love it. So, so 2016, family moves to Texas. was. Let me take you back to when you were in dental school in, in Oklahoma City, you had an option or the opportunity to go back to India, join your dad's roaring practice, and he's known in the country, top orthodontist in India. He treats the prime ministers, that level of people. You could have gone back, but you said, you know what, I'm going to make my own career over here. Walk us through your thought process, even though you are second generation orthodontist, but you took it upon yourself to start from ground zero. Walk us through that, Shristi. So I'll tell you a little story, Kunal. So you know what they say, when a seed falls under a tree, it can only grow to stay under that canopy. You can never grow beyond that because that's just how that works, right? So I definitely had this wonderful opportunity and most of the people that know us and the families that know us and the family that knows our families back in India would always question why I wouldn't go back. Um, And honestly, I just feel like it was because I wanted to do something for myself. I wanted to know my own worth in a way of just not being, um, I don't know if the right word is, but in the shadow of somebody that already established something and create something for myself, create an identity for myself, create a life for our family here. And, um, You know, we put in all the hard work and the education and the dedication and all the lemons that life throws at you when you have that situation. And um, and that's what I don't regret it a day. Who you are today, Dr. Mehta. I mean, there are a lot of people listening into the show today 
on Facebook Live and on the radio who have been handed on businesses, whether it's a gas station, whether it's a grocery store, or whatever it may be. When a business passed on to you and you do not have the first generation mindset, you do go so far. But what's incredible is you could have been a leading orthodontist in India today, but like you said, when a seed falls from a tree, it's still going to be under the shadow or limelight of the tree, which is your doctor, Matha, your dad over here. So he took the decision, that crossroad, no, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make a name for myself. So that was the first crossroad. You made the decision of staying in America. Nine years, Oklahoma City, then came another crossroad. Now, this was your husband wanting to move to Houston to join the best cancer hospital in, in the world. Yep. You made the decision, uprooted yourself, brought your two young daughters to Houston, and you joined a practice. So you're not self-employed, you're working for someone. But you had the bug, as we say in Hindi, Urdu, you have to kira tha, kira that tha. you know what? I want to be self-employed. I want to be in control of my future, my success. And for a period of time, you're working your own job and you were working over opening your own practice in Houston market. Walk us through that thought process and journey of working double shift, being a mother, entrepreneur, having two young daughters at home, your husband being a physician in the market, and he's super busy. It's multiple balls in the air that you were juggling, but you were steadfast, focused on your own business growth strategy. Walk us through the thought process, Dr. Mehta. So, you know, I want to say one thing is definitely the focus is there, but I have to say something about this community that we're in, whether it's the community of people that we're surrounded with here in Houston, or it's the dental community that was very welcoming. And, you know, they had really no reason to include me in this community but the fact of the matter is that everybody here was inclusive and you know we're all working towards this common goal of giving our patients the best care that we can um as far as the process of moving here and you know i i decided there's been two times in my life where my destiny was decided by the people that employed me and they controlled what I did on a daily basis, what my day was going to look like, what my paycheck was going to be, what level of job satisfaction I was going to have. And I got to the point where I said, I'm not going to let anyone control my destiny anymore. My destiny must be in my control. And, you know, the unique experience and skill set and knowledge that we have with all this education that we've gotten, I have the ability to do that for myself and can't really do it without the support of the dental community. Honestly, I can't but say absolutely amazing things about all these doctors that refer their patients to me. They trust me with taking care of their their own families as well as you know their patients. And um, but really, the driving force for me was not having anyone control my destiny from this point forward. Uh, through two months that you're talking about, were they both in Houston or was in one in Oklahoma or one in Houston, Texas? So really, it was both of them were in Oklahoma City. The first one was right when I got out of school. You know, we didn't have any. My husband was a resident. You know, we were baseline, what you would say, poor, right, from the standard of living. And uh, um, that was uh, one of the thoughts that I had at that point was, hey, let's just go back. Life will be so easy. We just go back because you show up and everything's done for you and you just have to make it better and, you know, improve upon it. But um, while I was in this practice, the company that I worked for decided that we were not profitable enough for them. So they decided to let me go. And, uh, and that was the first that job. That was my first job that I had within the first year of me having that job. Well, so uh, first, Dr. Mehta, you made a decision of staying back in America. Yes. Not following the footsteps, go back to India and join your dad's yes. practice. You get employed. Yeah. And within a year, you get laid off. Absolutely. I mean, you Absolutely. must have been devastated. It was devastating. I was pregnant. I was uh, well, getting ready. Well. Yes, I was getting ready to have my first child with Anya, with who's, Anya my, okay. who's now 14. So I was getting ready to have her. And, uh, you know, we, I just, uh, my husband was, uh, he's an amazing support system for me. He's definitely the wind beneath my wings. And, uh, you know, of course, he has a very big career of his own, but he's always been supportive of me. And he told me, you know what, we're going to fight this together. You're going to look for another job opportunity. And I did. And I found a wonderful opportunity. 
It gave me everything that I could ever want in my career type, uh, you know, job satisfaction, financial success, um, just the ability to take care of hundreds of patients, which is what really drives me. That's why I wake up every day and go to work and breathe this air and live this life is to help these people that I work with. And um, we, I, I had this other job and soon they decided that their company was big enough to sell to another big service organization called a dental service organization. And they sold their entire set of dental practices of which I was a part to this other big organization. So again, my destiny was not in my own hands and the control went away from me to somebody else. And my employer changed. And so those were lemons. Those were big, some big you, lemons. Yep. 2016 moved to Houston, Texas. But within a year, you made the financial decision of opening your own practice, which is Indigo Orthodontics in Houston market. And that one year of working at PDS, where you're working all the long hours, but you had the vision that I got to do something. I'm not going to allow anyone else to lay me off or having control over my paycheck or what I do. So walk us through your thought process of being an employee all your life in America and becoming a self-employed entrepreneur, having your own clinic, Indigo Orthodontics. Walk us through that thought process. So I really feel that every opportunity has to be evaluated in not just a financial perspective. It's very important, don't get me wrong, but I had to consider my life. I had to consider my children. I had to consider my husband's career. And that's what us women entrepreneurs do, don't we? We... We consider everybody else. Plus, we have to consider our own career decisions. So really for us, it was, for me, the turning point was, you know, with this, I did what's easy, which is come over here to Houston and find another job. So I found a job. I was living in Sugarland, driving to League City, driving all the way to Galveston to see patients. And at some point, it became absolutely impractical for my life. And that's when I decided that, you know, there's absolutely going to be no more of this. We're going to be controlling as much as we can. Of course, we don't, you know, we feel like we can control everything, but we can control what we can. I would have control over my hours. I would control how much I wanted to work. I would control how many patients I was willing to see. I would control the treatment that I would deliver to them. And I would control the standard of care that I was providing to the patients that, you know, that trust us. So that was kind of what led me to saying, hey, you know what, let's make this big decision. Let's no longer have a paycheck and let's start out with zero and let's see how it goes. So in 2017, Indigo Orthodontics was born in the month of June and you had all the energy, all the excitement starting your own clinic with zero patients. And a few months later, we all experienced Harvey in Houston, huge lemon throat in all of us. So having just opened your clinic, building a practice, building a patient you know, roster and database and, and, and bringing on team members, employees, and here comes Harvey, huge lemon thrown at you. Yep. How did you guys handle that? So that was, you know, that was definitely a tough time. You know, starting a dental practice for anyone that's ever started a business knows that when you start any sort of business, specifically a dental business, it's a very investment intensive process. So we had a pretty significant size loan um, that, you know, we had kind of taken on. And here I was with these two employees uh, who are still actually wonderfully with me and they're amazing. Um, we had Harvey flood our office. My practice got flooded. Fortunately, we didn't have a ton of equipment damage, but it was bad enough for me to kind of wonder if I had made the right decision. But I knew in my heart that Nothing was going to stop me at that point. And, um, you know, I just spent my energy on recovering. I spent my energy on building a network of people that I could trust and that would trust me with their patients. And those are these referring dentists that I'm forever indebted to. And we kind of got through it. And here we are today. We are super excited to be where we're at. And um, and the journey, Dr. Matha, you shared that Houston has a lot of Desi people mm -hmm. and a lot of dentists, a lot of orthodontists. But in your journey of starting your practice, you had a lot of mentors, a lot of co-workers or, or, your, or your leads in the market who were in the field and they motivated you, fired you up and gave you direction of what to do. And that's what is really amazing about our Houston community. 
You may yeah. think that you are a realtor, you're an orthodontist, or you're a gas station owner, and people are here to cut you off and get ahead of you. But we have an abundance of opportunities. Yes. And the people who help pave the path for you to start your own practice, Indigo Orthodontics, they are still behind you. And as you grow your practice, as you grow as a business owner, they always are there as a listening ear for you, and they give you their advice. How have they impacted your business growth, Dr. Mehta? So I can just say that this community that we have here is, it's a, it's a diamond. It's just, I can't even describe the community that we're in. It's been inclusive. It's been welcoming. Um, you know, I've got some great mentors and friends. Several of them are in my profession. Um, many of them, we cross, we learn from each other. We grow with each other. Uh, you know, we have these big WhatsApp groups that have 200 dentists on there, all from Texas, several of them from the Houston area. And, uh, you know, everybody is just absolutely wonderful at sharing information. And, um, you know, it's just like when COVID happened, all those things is what kind of kept us, kept us afloat because several of us would have drowned with COVID because it was, I would think, the hardest thing that happened to any yep. Anybody, but specifically dentists, considering, you know, the type of work that we do. That was a huge learn. But in our community, Dr. Mehta, where being Daisy, we don't trust people easy. Yes. And you think mm -hmm. if I'm an uh, orthodontist or if I'm a dentist, if I ask somebody who's from my community, what should I do, what I, sh what I should not do, you have this concern that, Kya wo mujhe sahi advice dene wale hai? Right. Kya mujhe mislead karne wale hai? So the mentors you pick from the market who are still going to be friends for life, that's, that's huge. And that's what we need to be doing. No matter what you do for a living, whether you're a gas station owner, cell phone store owner, seek out people in the market who are able to help you grow. And that's what makes us successful. So that was the first lemon. Then came 2000, 2020. 2020. We had COVID. And as a dentist, as an orthodontist, you work so close proximity with patients. And it's a disease that's passed on through saliva exchange right air, how did you deal yeah. with that air and all those yeah, things so yeah. being an orthodontist that was a huge curveball thrown at your business lemon thrown at you walk us through what did you do about that dr Mehta? so really any dentist will tell you that man covid just threw everything off track you know it's it it was the hardest thing that could happen i mean how do you maintain social distancing with your dentist how do you not how do you do that so you know, our profession is your very close contact with people. And uh, it was a very tough time. Um, but, you know, we got through it through each other's support. And that's the power of the community we're in. That's the power of having mentors that you can count on to give you great advice when it's needed, especially when situations, big health situations like that come up. Um, acquiring PPE, which, you know, we desperately needed in our work field you know i mean we have mountains of ppe that we needed to kind of get through the covid shutdown and things like that um uh, but again i have to say that it's your team it's the mentors that you surround yourself with and it's the community you're in that gets you through a lemon such as that and, and also and, understand um, at that time not just your clinic but businesses were laying off people that's right because they weren't sure what's going to happen next am i going to have a business tomorrow but i understand at that time you actually were retaining employees and you were making sure they were taken care of, even though your clinic was shut down. And that's what creates loyalty with the team members and it become family. And you shared for the last five, seven years, you've had two original team members who are still with you. And now you have 20 plus. Is that the right number, Dr. Matthew? I think we're at 20 as of today. Yes, we have 20 employees and uh, I shouldn't say employees. They're my team members. Yep. They're my family I would do anything for them and they know that because I believe any organization is only as good as its people and any leader is only as good as how well they can take care of the people that help them do what makes them happy. And I've been so, to a clinic, uh, Dr. Matha, where it's the environment when you first walk in. It's the first person who greets the customer, how they exchange with them. And then, of course, the dental care that you provide, your team provides. But then after that, making sure there's after Follow after up. follow through i mean mm -hmm. that's the whole experience so you know you could be a dentist i could be a realtor you know we could sell homes in our sleep you could fix people's teeth or smile in your sleep but it's experience that your team provides so how do you embody the experience of providing exceptional service 
to your patient when they walk through. Well, how do you train a team members to provide that kind of mindset? So, I mean, that is an amazing, that's a million dollar question, I should say. <laughs> like, we should put a million that's dollar, a million sauce dollar that. that's the secret sauce. But honestly, it's really just comes down to, in the end, treating the people that work with you on your team amazing. You treat them amazing. They're going to treat your cause in an absolutely involved fashion. So my team knows that what matters to me more than anything else is how we make our patients feel. Whether my smile is 100% or 98%, I know that. But how you make people feel when they're around you is more important. And that's the principle that we live by. That's how I train them. As far as how we logistically do it, we have training days set up in our schedule. You know, there's clinical training and then there's phone training. How do you pick up the phone? What are the right words to use? What are the bad words that you never say? You know, things like that. How to discuss money, how to talk about fees, things like that. So we train on that. There's scripting, but really in the end, it's you know, each piece, each person in the office is, um, they have a role, they know how to perform their role, and uh, I think it's the people that make any business successful. It's I the people that work there. for your team members, as employers, I'm an employer as well, you know, we reward our team members. But I understand that you reward your family members of your team members. What I mean by that is, correct me if I'm wrong, but you actually give them opportunity to take their family offer a nice dinner or a meal so that they're cherishing the time your team member spends at the office so that they realize what the wife or the spouse goes through being in a clinic. So your giving attitude of not only, only rewarding your team members, but their family members, but allowing them to go to a nice restaurant to have a meal, but that's incredible. Is that part of your secret sauce, Dr. Mehta? So, I mean, if I told you, then it wouldn't be secret anymore, right? <laughs> but, but honestly, I mean, it's really just taking care of your people because I feel like your cause cannot be fulfilled without the people, especially in, in, in the type of work that I do. I need 50 hands to do what I do every day. And those hands can't be mine because I only have two. So I just feel strongly that, you know, taking care of the people, whether it's taking them out to dinner, taking their families out, giving their kid a gift for their birthday, whatever it might be that is, each person has sort of a, you know, just like they dukti nubs to make sure that you are able to identify that. And then not everybody is motivated by money. There are team members that are not motivated by money. Everybody has a different motivation. Some people are, if I tell a team member, that's not motivated with money, you give them extra money, they're not going to overperform. It's really, somebody could say, if I tell a patient, hey, or a team member, you did a great job on this patient's whatever, braces wire you did, and the patient hears me say that, for them, that's their motivation. That's you a know? validation. That's a validation, and you know, to constantly give positive reinforcement to your team and even to your patients is... Part of the secret sauce. Love it. But not all of it. Dr. Mehta, we talked about your journey coming to America 20 years back, Oklahoma City to Houston, Texas, you know, bring your husband to Houston, joining MD Anderson for him. Great journey. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we want you to share with us the patient that you take care of. What age profile? What, is, what does it mean to getting a beautiful smile? Is it a week-long process? Is it a year-long process? What does it take? <laughs> so when we come back, guys... Dr. Mehta will share with us what kind of patients she takes care of and how she does that most effectively. You're listening into Lemonade with the Seth Brothers. And we'll be right back with a few messages. Six days a week. Welcome back to the show, Lemonade with the Seth Brothers. This is your host, Kunal. And in the studio today, we have Dr. Shrishti Mehta, leading orthodontist in the Houston market. She shared with us before the break, what it means to be an orthodontist. An orthodontist is a specialist in the dental field. They actually go to school for not one, not two, but three more years. And they specialize in making your life and your smile even better. And Dr. Mehta, over all these years, not just in Texas and Oklahoma, has, has made not hundreds, thousands of smiles more beautiful. So Dr. Mehta, share with us, your profile of patient that you take care of. I know you have young kids to adults, and 65% of your patients are kids, 35% adults. What is the age gap between the youngest and the oldest patient you've taken care of? 
Great question. So I would say all the way from seven to 77. And I, I can tell you that my oldest patient is about 89 years old. Wow. I don't know if I would do that part again, but you know. The 89 year old, are they single, ready to mingle? Or what's going <laughs> on with that smile? She just said, I was in <laughs> fact encouraging her not to do orthodontic treatment and you know, just 89 year old, 89 years old, 89 wow. years old, you know, it's never too late to do something good for yourself. It's never too late. You know, you're so right, uh, Dr. Mehta, where your <laughs> smile speaks a million words. And you know, people say eyes are expressive. Yes, they are. But most people, you know, wear the shades, hide the, hide the looks. But smile is one thing you cannot put away. And making a smile beautiful, whether it's fixing them, or making them whiter. What do you call that? Whitening. Whitening. Bleaching. Bleaching. <laughs> and you know, doing all those things is critical. Yes. So your patients, seven year old, all the way to 89 years old, when these young kids come to your clinic, do they know what they sign up for? Is it, is it, is it a medical issue that brings the parents to the clinic? Or is it actually they want to make the kids smile more beautiful? So this is the season of giving, right? We're in this season of the holidays where it's all spirit of giving. I can just tell you your smile is the gift that keeps giving. It never stops giving because you're literally going to be using this for the rest of your life. So when people come and ask me, hey, is this going to cost me a car? Because, you know, the common misconception is braces is going to cost me my child's college education. Or am I paying for a car here? Like, what is this? I always just say, it's kind of corny, but I just say, it's the gift that keeps giving. Wow. It's the gift that keeps giving. And it is true. But to answer your question more directly, so my patients, you know, there's a very common misconception that adults shouldn't get braces, right? But I completely disagree because I can tell you that 35 to 40% of my patients are adult patients. And when I say adult, I'm talking about somebody that's over the age of 18, um, and they can do braces, they can do Invisalign, there's different ways that we can use to straighten teeth. We also do this very cool thing, and I think maybe we're one of two or three providers in the entire greater Houston metro area that does braces on the inside of the teeth. So if you can all sit, you know, doing the job you do, you don't want to wear braces, and you want a straight smile, which you got, your smile is kind of nice, so, you know, we're not going to hold you to that. But um, You're right. <laughs> That's fake but, news. But you can literally have braces <laughs> placed on the inside of your teeth. So, again, I'm a layman, and what, I'm, what you're saying is normally when you see someone wearing braces, we see, we see the wires, yes. and each tooth is, is braced piece with a metal. piece of metal. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is you can actually put it on the inside? On the inside. So, literally on the inside of your teeth. So, on the back side of your teeth, so nobody can see them. Does that cost more money? money for a patient so it costs me more money but it doesn't cost you more money so when i come in or a patient comes in do you give them the option or is it based on their dental or face layout that yes. it can work for everyone or yes. how does that work so not everybody is a candidate and okay. the best way to find out is to come and have one of us do an exam and check and see if you're a candidate it's a technology called embrace and it's braces on the inside of the teeth it's unique it's um it's absolutely phenomenal. We have lots of patients doing it, but it's not for everyone. So it does need us to look and see if, you know, you're a candidate for so it. So you make but smiles beautiful. And again, I'm going to throw a curveball at you. I've seen these ads on TV, order online, yes. order on TV, comes in a box, put it on. It is going to make your smile better. Now, they are basically saying it's a self-do process. You know, how you have attorneys and companies that say, Sign up for it. We'll give you self-care. How does that impact your business? So I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this because <laughs> there might be some patent laws and stuff like that around this. But all I can say is, yeah, it may cost a little bit less. But in the end, you know, the product that you're going to get is not going to be the same. Because the right product in expert hands can only get you better results than wrong product in no hands. Right? So... I mean, would you want unsupervised care for your child? I wouldn't. I mean, I would want the best. Why would I want anybody but the best? And self-directed care of any kind, you know, especially when it comes to your teeth, your bite, your jaws, anybody that's had dental problems knows that it's not fun. When your teeth hurt, your bite hurts, your jaws hurt, your muscles hurt, you can't chew, that's no fun. That's right. what that? you're saying is self-care can possibly save your daughter or two, but come to the specialist, let them handle your dental care. And also I've heard the term Invisalign. Am I saying it correctly? Invisalign. What's that all about, Dr. Mehta? 
So Invisalign is a clear way or it's a less visible way to straighten your teeth and correct your bite at the same time. So Invisalign is something that we we do a lot of in our practice. We are diamond providers for Invisalign, which means that we have Are you a, saying you put diamonds in the teeth? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> uh, no, it's it just it's a level of how I many cases it's, you are your an expert. expertise. Sure. Your expertise. And so they, you know, send patients, like patients get concierge towards us because of how much of it we do and you know our level of expertise with it. But it's basically a way to straighten your teeth without braces. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of adult patients and even some teenagers now that don't necessarily want to wear braces because of the social, you know, they don't want to have senior prom pictures with braces or they don't want to go to college with braces and things like that. And so we have this very nice way to straighten teeth, which is uh, very less obvious and very less visible. And Invisalign is wonderful and I absolutely love it. And I highly recommend you check it out. So Houston has a lot of dentists, a lot of orthodontists. What sets your practice apart from other orthodontists in the Houston market? Me? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have to say it's just patient experience. Um, just our proficiency in the work we do. I would say integrity because, you know, dentists sometimes have gotten kind of a bad reputation is that they're doing unnecessary work. But I can just tell you that we practice with deep integrity. Um, I love what I do and I'm passionate about it. I will never do for you what I wouldn't do for myself. And I think that's a big, which is true for a lot of you know providers. Another thing that I feel like sets us apart is just keeping up with technology. We're all about, we recently, during COVID, in fact, I had the time, so we bought a 3D CT scan machine to be placed in my orthodontic practice that helps 3D evaluation of jaws, teeth, and airway. So, so that's part of somebody walks and says, I'm considering getting some treatment done. Yes. And you provide that assessment. And for these assessments, you actually charge a fee, Dr. Mehta? So interestingly enough, we are doing a lot of these consultations completely complimentary, equal to free. But yes, and we do include our assessment in terms of uh, photographic assessment and radiographic examination, which is basically x-rays. And if we need a 3D x-ray, we'll take it. And we don't charge the patient for that. So. Well, so patients come in, they talk about what they need. Do they come, get the information from you and go shop around for the services and the cost? Would they pay you or pay other doctors? So Kunal, I was just going to say, you and I have both been in business long enough <laughs> to know the answer to that question is yes. Patients are always shopping for these things. But I just feel like that's the reality of what it is. And you just have to do things that set you apart and you have to hold your ground and you have to provide the best care and, you know, do your work with integrity and excellence and the rest will follow. Now you write so right, Dr. Mehta, where as a realtor, <laughs> you know, we get asked all the time by client, you know, how much commission would you give back? 1%, 1.5%, 2%. And back in the day when you made the team in 2014, Sonat and I had a philosophy that, we got to elevate our value because mm -hmm. cost is only a concern when there's lack of value. Yes. If you demonstrate value effectively, give your patients or your clientele right amount of service, what we earn as realtors, what you charge as an orthodontist almost becomes irrelevant. And the patient or the client who wants a discount, whether it's commission or what they pay in your dental clinic fees, they will never be loyal to the service you provide. They have loyalty to the discount. And the day they find another realtor or another orthodontist or dentist is giving a discount, that's where there goes a loyalty. And early on, I know we adopted this policy that, you know, we would choose who you want to work with. And as a new business owner, I experienced this. I know you experienced the same thing. Saying no to a business coming through the doors when you just open the clinic because this patient wants 10%, 20%, or X percent discount where you devalue on services that's a wrong mindset. A lot of business owners in Houston, Texas say, you know, chalta hai, theek hai, kar lete hai, kuch to paisa aa hai. But when you have that kind of mindset of lowering your fees to align yourself with the client's expectation, you're lowering your values. And I remember you sharing with me that you've turned away a lot of patients. You tell them, here's what I'm going to do for your kid or for you. Here's what they need. And that's what we charge, which is industry standard, which other doctors charge. And when you turn away that business, Yes, it feels bad and you feel a little bit shy, but 
that gives us the confidence that you know what i'm here to provide the best value so elevating your value where questions are not asked about service you provide but you shared the patients who come in who only want to talk about what you're going to charge for those dental care not putting any value to the service you provide how do you deal with them dr mehta so you know it used to bother me a lot when patients would ask for you know additional discounts which by the way we accept insurances too so there's already some kind of you know fees that the patient is not having to come up with from that perspective but i just feel like what you said is very correct is you elevate your value by providing a unique customer experience in my case a patient experience and you elevate your service by delivering convenient hours the best possible outcomes you can and really just explaining everything to a family that needs them what they need to know to make the correct decisions and then you just have to leave the process at that right it does hurt in the beginning when you're a new business owner and all you have is bills and bills and bills and you know you don't have a revenue coming in but honestly i feel like a lot of times deep discounted services it's it maybe that's not the best kind of revenue to have so i love the analogy so dr mata you opened a clinic in june 2017 and harvey came around it's been open for a few years your clinic in richmond area of grand parkway indigo orthodontics would you mind sharing with us your patient care from going from zero patients where you at today how many patients do you see on a daily weekly monthly basis how many smiles have you made more beautiful the last few years in houston So I would say in my life it's probably 20,000 smiles and counting. Wow. So we've we've <laughs> we've done a lot in you know 20,000 smiles. 20,000 smiles, very white pretty wide smiles. Um we started out with absolutely zero patients in the practice and uh you know with this amazing network of people that I work with, the dentists that refer to me and uh, you know just basically ground marketing you know going to schools bringing out my little flyers and taking them to different events and same kind of things you guys do you know just having um marketing material out in the community and just getting my name out via whatever ways i could whether it's social media or things like that we have definitely grown and we're blessed to have um uh, uh you know we live we're in a great community i'm in richmond which is uh, it's a nice growing area there are lots of new homes being built you should know that and uh, you know it's a wonderful part of richmond to be in and you know at this point there are days when you know i see anywhere from 70 to 100 patients a day depending on what type of clinic day i have like wow. today today was an 84 patient day and uh, i saw my 84 patients put on some lipstick and ran over here to do the show Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> 84 patients in a day. 84 smiles corrected and improved in a day. That's incredible. <laughs> so while you have a great practice and you engage and you actively helping people get their smiles better, but I also understand you dedicate time and effort by physically visiting other doctors in the area. Personally going and thanking them for the business for the trust in you. And here's what happens when you get success no matter what you do. We, we forget about the referring partners in the business. We say, "Ah, they are business. They are going to be here. What is the difference?" But the fact that you go out personally, and you can send your staff, but you personally go out, thank those doctors in person, take them treats or take them gifts, whatever it may be, just to say, "Thank you, doctor. Thank you for trusting me with your patients and sending them to me, making the smile more beautiful." How do you embody that discipline of staying grounded? of going out and thanking those people on a regular basis Dr. Mehta. You know, I can't say enough about my level of gratitude to these people because it's not easy to have somebody new come in your door and say, "Hey, I'm Dr. Mehta. Let me help you help your patients." You know, it's not an easy thing to do. But I do feel like having a personal connection and having a face to a name is very important in any business any kind of business where you're trying to ask other people to refer you whether it's clients or patients or any type of business having a face to the name having a personal connection with them and a lot of them you know i've actually 
They can presentations of my work. Like, let me show you what I can do. A picture speaks a million words. And, you know, ask them to run these ideas with me back and forth. Plus, I also have a interdisciplinary study group where we get a bunch of us together in a room, you know, 16, 17 of us in a room, and we talk about collaborative care and, you know, working on a patient's smile as a team. I had one of those today. So we'll just do that. And um, I just feel like having the discipline, it's like anything else, right? The discipline to eat right, the discipline to run your business properly, the ris- discipline to have a good financial plan, the discipline to everything needs discipline. So yeah, I mean, discipline is... Um, That's great. It's key. You talk about collaboration. We actually bring dentists, orthodontists, to your clinic, and you guys have these brainstorming sessions. You talk about what's working, what's not working. You share knowledge-based expertise in the industry. So how did you come up with the idea of bringing people in together? Because you're super busy, 80, 100 patients a day, but you still make time on a regular basis to bring these doctors, dentists, orthodontists to your clinic to share ideas. Why do that, Dr. Mehta? I just feel like collaboration is, um, you know, there are... Nobody can do anything alone. I firmly believe that you need a group of people with the same level of skill and expertise. And there are people that are always going to have more expertise than you, and there's always something to learn. And then on the other hand, there's other people that are younger in the specialty, newer in the specialty, maybe haven't done as many, maybe don't have 20,000 smiles under their belt. Maybe they have four or three or two or one. There's always something they can learn from me. So I just feel that Overall, the learning must continue. Love you it. cannot learn. You cannot grow unless you learn. Love it. So you have this abundance mindset of sharing knowledge, sharing expertise. Let other people learn from your mistakes. Learn from the lemons thrown at you and then make them more successful in the field. So you've been successful as an orthodontist in Houston and you've been here for almost five years in your practice, Indigo Orthodontics. What's your long-term vision, Dr. Mehta? Where do you see yourself in the next 5, 10, 20 years? If it were up to me, I'd just keep doing what I'm doing because I love it so much and I'm deeply passionate about it and I feel like it drives me. So I see myself pretty much being in that community that has embraced me with open arms. You know, hopefully we'll Are you saying you're not going to move back to Oklahoma City? Oklahoma's done. (laughs) I love that. We we loved it. Texan for life. It gave us a lot. It gave us, you know, I met my husband there, so I can never forget that. Sure. And uh, my kids were born there, and that's probably the most important things. I got my education there, which has brought me where I am today or, you know, where I'm going to be in the future. But, yeah, I mean, I see myself right here in Houston, you know, serving this community, uh, working with my mentors and, you know, mentoring maybe younger doctors and just trying to do the very best we can. So love it. So just so we can get the audience to understand, in the dental field, you could be a dental assistant. Yes. You can be a dental hygienist. You can be a dentist. You can be an oral surgeon. Or you can be an orthodontist. The best of the best (laughs) orthodontist. Is that how it is, Dr. Mehta? Well, I don't know (laughs) about that. But I do do feel like it's one of the nicest specialties. Um, It's just happy people. Nobody's in a lot of pain. You know, there's kids running around. There's some, you know, it's it's a very nice population demographic. And uh, it's a rewarding profession, both in terms of, uh, you know, financially rewarding as well as rewarding in terms of uh, just job satisfaction. And so, being a women entrepreneur, I understand in your team, you have 20 other women that you support. Some of them are single moms. Some of them are young adults. And you help them transition from one phase to the next phase. So being a woman entrepreneur, woman entrepreneur, not just who is successful, but uber successful in Houston, is it strategic that you only have women that own your staff or your team members? What are you trying to accomplish with help them get more success? What's your vision, Dr. Mehta? I always tell my patients is we're a girl gang. Like literally (laughs) we're a girl gang. Like, you know, I've had a couple of, I don't have anything against men, obviously, but I have had a couple of male assistants helped me in my clinic and um, we always go back to our girl gang I just feel like the vibe with us women being in there it's so empowering and uh, for the ladies that work with me and my right hand my left hand my right finger my left finger my left foot they're just everything to me and uh, they empower me and I empower them and 
I hope for them to accomplish everything that they want to accomplish. For example, I had an assistant that wanted to go to hygiene school. So, you know, we kind of got her in the process of that. And, you know, she went in, in that direction. And, you know, different people have elevated their standard of living, hopefully, and um, the qualification new wise, skills. Dr. Mehta, to join your clinic, at a minimum, you need to be a dental assistant? Assistant, okay. yes. And what does it take to be a dental assistant? How many years of school? What's the process? I think it varies, but I believe there's a six-month program, oh, wow. and then which is just the basic, you get a registered dental assistant certificate. And from that point on, a lot of it is just teaching the skills that are required, and we're always training. I have a team that trains, and that's all they do is train new people. So that's it's a learned skill, but basically you need a six-month or so registered dental assistant certificate. Well, and then once you become a dental assistant, then you can progress to being a dental hygienist and so on and so forth. Hygiene school is a little different. Hygiene school, you know, you have to have a college degree um, to be able to get into hygiene school, which is not necessarily the case for being a, a registered dental assistant or RDA as we call it. You could be a high school graduate and then do an RDA and that works too. Dental hygiene is two years after college and it has to be at a uh, accredited dental hygiene assisting program. They have several of them in Texas, but yeah. So all the women listening to the show today who have an aspiration to have work-life balance, I believe dental profession allows you to do that because once you're in the clinic as a hygienist or a dental assistant, you come in and go, but you don't take your patients with you. But that also gives you the job satisfaction of being someone who's adding value, making people yes. smile more beautiful. Yes, yes. No, I mean, to, to be honest with you, I got into med school, but I chose dentistry for the work-life balance. You're telling me you could have been a physician I today? could have, I could have, but I wouldn't well, change this for the Well, then Dr. Punk would have married you then. <laughs> that's true, that's true. <laughs> but seriously, I mean, I just feel like the work-life balance in our profession is amazing. And it's financially rewarding. Again, job satisfaction is intense, like you were pointing out. It's just an overall great career, especially for women, really anybody. I mean, why just women? But hey, you can own your business or not. You can be employed like I was for several years. And if you choose that that's not the way to go, you can own your business. You know, so it's a, it's a, it's a very rewarding career. And there are many opportunities and lots of choices to be made. And um, I love it. Love it. So anyone who's listening to the show today, whether you are, you have a kid who is seven year old or you are 70 year old or for that matter, even 89 years old. Dr. Mehta in the house today has made smiles beautiful for kids as young as seven years old to as young at heart who are 89 plus. So don't feel shy. Age is a number. Agar aapko apni smile or Sundar Banani hai, then call Dr. Mehta today. Call her clinic today. Her number of her clinic is 281-201-2087. Once again, the clinic number for Dr. Mehta in Richmond area, Indigo Orthodontics, is 281-201-2087. Dr. Mehta, you shared with us today your journey of coming to America 20 years back. You had a choice to go back to India and join your dad's orthodontics practice. And again, he's a leading orthodontics of India. Ex-prime ministers, ex-leaders come to his clinic even today to get dental care. You could have chosen an easy path, being a second-generation orthodontist. But you took the path of making your own success story to prove to yourself that nothing is impossible in this country, the land of opportunity, America. You had a great successful employment history in Oklahoma City, but you took the plunge, followed your hubby, Shubham Mehta. Should I call him Shubham Mehta? <laughs> Shubham Punt, Dr. Shubham Punt, oncologist, currently employed at MD Anderson. He followed his dream to come to Houston. He came in over here and you opened your own practice in 2017. A few months later, Harvey came along. But over the years, the resilience that you have, the mindset you've had, and you are growing exponentially. It was so incredible learning about your story today, Dr. Mehta. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for sharing with us and also sharing with the audience today. If they have interest in getting the field, it, all it takes is six-month certificate program 
to become a dental assistant. The work-life balance, the pay, it's all rewarding. So if you have interest in being in the field, call Dr. Mehta. She'll engage with you, she'll encourage you, and motivate and drive you to be more successful. To be an independent woman entrepreneur. How does that sound, Dr. Love Mehta? that, love that, love that. Can't beat that. Any final words for the audience today, Dr. Mehta? I just want to say, guys, if your kids are between 7 and 18, you know, and you find that they're snoring or they're not sleeping well, uh, you need to see an orthodontist. Or they are restless in the morning, unable to focus at school. There's many things we can do to help them. I'm very passionate about this. We're deeply involved in trying to help kids breathe better and sleep better and learn better and consequently grow better. So... I just wanted to say thank you, Kunal, for having me. It's been an absolutely amazing hour recounting my journey. And um, thank you guys for listening. And let me know if you all need anything. Well, that was Dr. Shristi Mehta on the show tonight on Lemonade with the Seth Brothers. Her clinic is in Richmond, area, right next to Aliana Harvest Green area, right off Grand Parkway. It's Indigo Orthodontics. Dr. Mehta, why don't you share the address of your clinic? It's 7975 West Grand Parkway, Suite 130 uh, in Richmond, Texas. Phone number is 281-201-2087. Call us for your complimentary consultation. Make your smile more beautiful for 2022. And let's make a rocking show. Guys, thanks for joining us today. This was Lemonade with the Seth Brothers.